um, the role that Katie played in the Emancipation was the integral one, meaning that Bookman was a Muslim. He was a Moor. And he taught the people to read from the Quran that he had. And when they caught him with it, they ripped it up through the pages in the fire. But the type of book it was, the pages was like, the, the press was like, uh, you know, like when you, when, with like a typewriter. So he jumped in the fire allegedly and pulled the, all of the, the presses out, but they're iron and stuff. So they burned to his body. So the whole aspects, pages of the Quran is like burnt on him. So then from there he escaped. And then once he healed, it became like writing. And so he taught the slaves how to read the so-called indentured moors in prison, who they call slave, and taught them to read and read and write from the Quran that was burning his body. You understand? The Haitians don't really talk about that part of the story. They leave out the part that he Muslim. And then from there, when you see the pictures of Bookman, he got a fez on. Right? Same thing with Toussaint. I found a picture of Toussaint. I showed in the other class where he had the red fez on, painting him with a red fez. Anyway, Bookman, as well as other Moorish princes like Mockendal, and uh, who was a great poisonist, they say he poisoned so many French people that they named the poison Mockendal after him. Like to this day, if you ask the Haitian about Mockendal, they think that you're trying to poison somebody. So he and many others was Muslims, you know what I'm saying? I'll do a whole thing on that when we get into the Haiti part. You know what I'm saying? Like this is fact, just like we learned last week that Frederick Douglass and David Walker and Denmark BC, all of these people descended from the Moors that set off the American Revolution in 1511 against those brutish Moors who was trying to hold them hostage through the, through the brutish it's Do the Buddhist more. Do the Buddhist more in the back. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's that. So then we have this, if you want to get into the, the root names of the original places that we call the West Indies. Now, if they were from Africa, why wouldn't they call it the West Africans or the West Africas or whatever? But they call them the Western Indians because this was the Indies or the Indios, the, the lands of the lost Indios, those without God, as they called them in the Jesuit, uh, who existed. So this was their land. So you had the Bahama, you had the Bimini, uh, Kubanacan, Goansana, Cayman, Escamaica, Anigua. Cainagua, Inagua, Ikoyo, Cayasarnian, Dianian, Kahini, right? These are all Moorish names. You understand? Mayaguana, right? So some of us got family from here. See what I'm saying? But they stopped calling it all of this and started calling it what we know it as today. So these are the original names. This is what the names of the so-called Arawak and Taino, which was a part of the Locono Confederacy. The Locono Confederacy with the Confederates of Moors all, all across the so-called West Indies that, or what we call the Antilles, you know what I'm saying? Or Antilia. Okay. So these were the free lands or what the Muslims would call the Bled El Siba, the lands outside where everybody was a sultan. So these were the lands that were segmented by the papacy due to the ancient aspect of us being the ones that ran them across the Hot Arabian Desert and basically helped in the grafting of them. One of my moors sent me this photo of an image that depicts what I'm talking about. 
Remember I told you we would put them on the little goats and then we chain them up and then they'd have to walk behind us as we led them away from civilization and all that. So here's an old demonstration of that. This is symbolic again of why the goat is so important to their culture because it was the only source of nourishment that they had when they were basically um, going through their non-human stage. You know what I'm saying? In the very recent past. So you see how big these malls are. You see these dudes is mass small, small enough where they could fit three on one horse. Right? Now that imagery comes later to us when we start talking about uh, so-called Freemasonry. And why, like I said, our people are in the position they're in because they follow in the wrong situation. Okay, that then falls to this because the oldest symbol of the Templars, again, was what? The two men on the horse. See? This, again, is why the goat is such important to them and why homosexuality is such a big part of their, their uh, religion as it is a, a form of, uh, of, bond, of pair bonding between them all, you understand? Okay. See what I'm saying? So this is the right, the so-called Masonic grouping that only exists between the males, the so-called European or Caucasian males that was passed down to them. This is why they're always with Pan and being and merged with the goat because that was again, part of their history in terms of living in the Six Hills and the Caucasus, as well as the time it was grafted in the Yucatan and all that. They was having sex with these animals and these goats and stuff and that was producing these types of creations, things like fawns and all of that. That's why, again, it's such an integral part. You understand? That the, the Baphomet that we understand that they use today to symbolize what we think is Satanism is just one part. And it's a rather modern version. Like, there was no Baphomet back in Babylon. You understand? That's some new stuff that basically was created by Elipis Levy, who plagiarized the Aquarian gospel of Jesus Christ, which... Uh, was then compiled as the Circle 7 Quran later and plagiarized that and then uh, helped create that when he, the image of Baphomet when he was in the Golden Dawn. And then Crowley upgraded it into a deity through all of the child sacrifices and stuff that he did to bring it corporally into the mind of the moon children and the members of the order that he was breaking into it at the time. You understand? So when we talk about walking the devil across the hot Arabian desert and all of that, this is the, the emblem of that. And so this became the, the epitome of the stance for them because they had no means of control outside of that. You understand? Because they were started out as slaves. This is an excerpt from a book called Templars and Assassins. Um, let's take a brief look at the affluence and influence and control of the Machiavellian Knights Templar, courtesy of the authors of past and present. The Templars became the servants and companions of the kings and princes. From the beginning, they were trusted familiars in the royal courts. You see, these are the white boys who are white slaves, Freemasonic, Castrados, Mamelukes, who are now given the right to fight for the kings and the queens of the day, who we know were, again, the Holy Roman emperors and these people who themselves were uh, melanated. Uh, we would call them Moors, but they would not due to them being under the order of Christ. You understand? The financial dealings of the Templars led them straight to the royal treasuries of which they were frequently keepers 
from the earlier 13th century onwards, the Templars in Paris was in effect the French royal treasury. Okay? So, what we understand as the Templars, right, were really just slaves. They were white or Caucasoid slaves who came up under a Moorish knight named Hugh de Payon, meaning Hugh of the Pagans. But like I said, the the reality of it was that they were always under a certain dominance. But these Moors that was dealing with them, again, were coming from a, the line of those Moors who were still dealing with old Roman customs. Okay. So these pseudo-Romans, you know what I'm saying, who are now calling themselves Europeans, who are now coming up into our families. Yeah, you see how misshapen they are. They're not even like regular people. But you can see they're distinctively different than the Moors who are fully garbed and inhabit, <laughs> who are leading the goat. So this shows you that, that there was a different, a definite def uh, how do you say, definitive mark between those Moors, right, and the so-called Freedmasons that they was basically leading away or civilizing in whatever way. You see what I'm saying? It's not like these Moors was on the horses with them. You understand? <laughs> so when you read about the history of the dog-hooded people of Europe, you know what, and I'm just serious. And a while. I'm sorry, they, but it's dope. Mm -hmm. They created a, a habit for the people to um to fall into a, a strategy to continuously control these things. It's, I understand. They um created certain uh, rituals, if you will, to help ways and figure out how they're gonna handle that from the time they on into the future because these things is a problem. So when you look up, like I said, the history of the dog-headed people, the um the the wild uh, yetis and the wind that goes from the six hills and all of that, you you see there's a book called The Twelve Secrets of the Caucasus. You read that book, also Making It a White Man by Paul Guthrie. You read those books, you see what I'm talking about. It's like a whole way that they had in dealing with these things when they would show up in society and realize that periodically they would need to civilize a certain amount of them. All of this allegedly going back to Kemet when these things were originally drafted as what they say. Yes, the goat is symbolically Capricorn, it's symbolically Saturn, it's also symbolically the skeleton or the skull, because Capricorn rules the bones. You know what I'm saying? So it's also representative of the black cube, the cobblestone. So like I said, globally, these Moors had these different ways of dealing with these things. But these European Moors was basically into using them as soldiers and stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually started using them against the rest of them. And so they started using different employers of warfare against us or with each other and started getting into the darker arts of... Um, of uh, what they call magic and stuff like that. So there's a series of wars, of course, <coughs> amongst the wars. Books on this you can get 
um, Moors and Christians, Templars um, versus the Christians. That's another book. Um, Muslim masters, Christian captives, um, Templars and assassins. There's a lot of books like that. So you can get those and you can read more about all of that stuff. But essentially, um, the goal of everything for them was dominance and holding on to their numbers by using these uh, beasts of burden, if you will, to control everybody and then promising them little little means of um yeah. and then controlling them with little means of control yeah. little means of control the main family that was into all of that specifically and the one that we deal with today that's above everybody else does everybody know about the Rothschild everybody know about the Rockefeller everybody you know what I'm saying? Anybody seen any so-called conspiracy book that read about them people, but them not the real people that's really serving the beast like that. They're the ones that the high people, which is really low, are using as um the father. This is where they get their money from. These are the ones that's descended from the real families. Um, the black pope, but even he who just died, by the way on the Vatican raids that's been happening in Italy. He was one of the casualties allegedly that was taken out. Um, he was also just the Jesuit general. The Jesuits is above everybody in terms of every all the intelligence, all of the, the banking stuff. That's, that's them because that, as I showed you, has been the ancestral thing that they've done for the so-called kings and queens of Europa and its holdings since the founding of that line, but it went from black to white within a certain time, but the white ones were doing it in a sense, I think on behalf of like the black ones, because the black ones was into all of the stuff that Islam was against, which is why they was, the Turks were so hard on them, and why the head of the great beast was taken by Mehmed Muhammad II in 1453 when he took Constantinople, which basically shut down the whole eastern portion of Rome, which then was good for the Vatican because then that led it to, in the West, to basically use its dominion to then have sway over here. But essentially, the Vatican is under Rome. The Pope of Rome is just the bishop under the Patriarch of Rome, who is the head of the five patriarchs of Byzantine. You understand? So those black, this dudes you see with the black robes that you see sometimes, or that you see like when Kim Kardashian, when got her baby baptized and stuff, those guys, those are the ones that did. So the black Pope is just what they call the Jesuit general. The families I'm talking about is like the, these families specifically. And then I'll show you how it triggered into the topic of what we're talking about. Again, the Duchy of Angier, during the investiture of the ceremony of Empress Sisman and Richard de Vere, the 11th Earl of Oxford, in the Order of Knights and the Saint of the Guard in St. George Chapel in Windsor. That's because the Church of England is different than the Vatican. When Vatican tried to take over England, England created its own church. And that church basically birthed what they called the Protestants or the Protestants. You understand? And then that's where everybody else comes in, the Baptists and everybody else, just in case somebody ever explained Christianity. So King Henry, uh, Richard Bongier, basically also received investure into the societies of the Draconis, the Order of the Dragon or the Dragon Society by the Emperor Sixman. A clear illustration of how truly, how the truth stronger than your strangest fiction is the founding membership of the scientist Draconis in 1388, see the 13th century. This was the buildup. This is when they knew that they was going to eventually dethrone 
the rest of us and then basically put us into the situations we are in now. This is when the heavy blood ritual stuff started happening and going down because now this was the reason why they wanted access into the Jerusalem over there. Because the Jerusalem over here, they had already, was basically still under siege. It hadn't been taken yet. Okay. So, uh, Vivard Mercia, right? The old father to Vlad. This is Vlad's father the king of mercy, was married to Princess Maria de Angenou of Ptolemy, what they call Luxembourg, uh, who was related to the Emperor Sigismund of Luxembourg. So at this point, the Imperial Royal Dragon Court is the ancient household court in order for the seniors of the Agvian family. This is where we get Anglican from, okay? Agavin in in the white side of the Agavin is the Anglican, okay? Descendants of the Imperial Royal House of Ver Caledonia, Anjou, and Lorraine. Remember, Lorraine and Anjou were French dominions, and I just showed you in what we just read that it was the French knights and all of them that was paying for the Templars, right? Under Hugh de Payon, who was from the House of Anjou, see what I'm saying? And his man, uh, who was a Lombard, who was from the House of Lorraine. See? So this is now these, like, if you could imagine at the time, like, like, like black Satanists, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who's posing as Christians, right? Who are now plotting to basically use the, the, the order they created to get close through these 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 pawns, these these uh, raised up Mamluks, right, to get next to these kings, and then they basically rule all the kings. But the kings think it's the Templars that's doing, it, when really it's the the niggas in the higher order in the House of Anjou, Lorraine and Caledonia, that basically created a princedom for themselves. Now they call Drakenberg. Okay, and Drakenberg reorganized under European law as a sovereign ethnic racial group, which had its principal nation states of the Draconian people. So this is now the the Draconian way of life. This is what allowed now so-called melanated or black people now to reestablish the Babylonian Draconian way of doing things, which then invited the reptilian brain to get more open, which then invites them now to become inhabited by whatever other entities, lower entities, deities they're dealing with through the blood magic. You understand? That is now being translated to these white boys into what we now today think of as Luciferianism or Satanism. But first, at the time, it's Freemasonry. You see? Furthermore, so, but now they have a legal right to do this with the people or two people in their dominions because they've established themselves as a state. Nice. Nice. I like the make a division between the laws. Nice. You can do another one. Furthermore, the royal ambassadorial nature of the title of the Prince of Dragonberg, Prince of Draconis, is recognized under the official observations of the Department of Internal Affairs of the government of its state of origin within the European Union. <laughs> the Imperial Royal Dragon Court or Order, his Prince uh, Nicholas de Vere von Drakenberg. This, this is the main family, right? And of the Drakenbergs, their house was referred to as what? Corvin, right? It was also called Corvid. You understand? This is why you never hear about Luxembourg in the paper. <laughs> you understand? When last time you read about Luxembourg in the paper? He imprisoned the Haduria Right, Corvin was the prince of Transylvania, Transylvania over here and over there. The Matavia Corvin de Honduria, Ecunian son, became the king of Transylvania and Hungary 
and he's the one who imprisoned Dracula in Castle for seven years. When he during that time is when he broke him out. I mean, is when he broke him into the Order, which was the Order of the Dragon, the same dragon again that we see used by China, we see used by Tartary, right? We see used by Japan, right? Another name of the dragon is the chimera, right? Which is another term that they use whenever they talk about viruses, right? Which is another name for Hydra. So the Principus Draconis is really the title held for the Moor, who is in the family, you know, in his true capacity. But they won't allow that, at least in the public. So they go from the other side, which is the pin, what they call the Pindar or the Royal Ipsissimus. These are the high titles in their little cult. And they bless stuff. So I'm showing you that it's all coming or came from us working against ourselves, which is again why the European aspect became so dominant in our lives due to their, you know, ritualistic magic. So when they talk about Dracula, again, the perfecta of the art of impalement, they talk about this dude, or who they show is this dude. Picture on the left is the early, is what they say is an earlier picture. So the thing about these guys is that they created what they call abattoirs and in their castles and in these abattoirs, they created, made sure that they had access to the inner earth, right? And in the inner earth, they were able to commune with, you know, the Drax. Now what's funny about this picture is that when you look on this side, you'll see what looks like a rabbit. See the two ears, face, the button nose, and the eye. Then on this one, you obviously see the Fez because he ruled the place called Wallachia. Right? Wallachia and all of that fell under the jurisdiction of the Turks, who again were used to slopping these people up and locking them down because these are the descendants of these Mamelukes that I told you were Templars. The Order of the Dragon was a Templar, was a French, was a Templar order. Or part, the Order of the Templars was under the Dragon Society, which is why the Templars was so into bloodletting and, and Baphomet and all of that stuff. You understand? That's why they were so treacherous and why they killed so many Christians. Read about the Templars and how many Christians they killed. Now, all of this, like I said, is Rome. This is all still Rome. You understand? These are Romans. <laughs> These ain't just regular uh, Eastern Balkan Christian whatever. These is Roman people. You understand? So they're functioning from the perspective of maintaining the old Roman values that have now been eroded or, or being done away with by Islam. But remember, Islam, like we read about last week, was the religion of Islam, right? Not the life culture that we was already living, but the religion of such was then uh, inspired by uh, Khadija, peace be upon her, who they say, again, was the noble woman who had bread. So according to uh, Al Jami Al Sahith, right? We read where it says, uh, uh, the Prophet returned to Khadijah, Muhammad, Muhammad's Catholic wife, 
while his heart was beating rapidly. She took him to Waraka bin Nafal, Khadija's cousin, who was a Christian, Roman Catholic, convert, and used to read the Gospels in Arabic. Waraka asked the prophet, what do you see? When he told him Waraka, he said, I see the same angel whom Allah sent to the prophet Moses. Should I live to tell you, receive the divine message, I will support you strongly. Okay, this is why there are so many tenets of Catholicism that are similar that you see in what they call the religion again of Islam. I'm not talking about what we are adherents to, which they would refer to as syncretic Islam, which is the unification of the truth of Allah outside of the man-made doctrine for the fact that we're descendants from the guys that they based all that stuff on. You understand? So we're looking at it from a different perspective. So the last king of Rome in that perspective was, uh, well, it's disputed. They say it's like the, the end really came when the Eastern Empire was just totally ran down. Well, it's the so-called Torah, then the Bible. See, the Bible is considered the Torah, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Torah is just the Old Testament. The Talmud is some stuff that they created when they was going crazy in Babylon, you understand? That has nothing to do with any of that. That's all the interpretations of the Zohar. The Zohar is the Moorish books that they was doing in Nas too, that they had no way of deciphering. So they created different spells and keys to be able to use uh, uh, via, again, pseudo magic. You know what I'm saying? So, the pale Arabs who had no civilization or culture at the time, other than the goat herding and the, the incest and all the stuff that they was doing based upon them being basically the slaves of the Romans. And so they were used as the groundswell to push everything forward in, in terms of the expansion. And then from that expansion, um, the, true Moors, the Moors now, start locking everything down and creating the constitutions and the battle strategies and all that because they are the, the true inheritors. They are the ones that's really backing Mohammed and all of that outside of what the Catholics is doing, what they think they're going to do with the uh, Arabs. So then once everything is solidified, you see a split and the rise or the establishment of the Abbasid Caliphate as the premier caliphate, right? Because it had the descendants of, again, Muhammad and them on his father's side, Abdullah, that's going all the way back now to the Moabite Canaanite kings and all of these people that descend and all that from over here. You understand? The Koresh tribe. The Koresh tribe is the tribe of Shabazz, right? <laughs> so, that ain't no, ain't no uh, Arabs in the tribe of Shabazz. So they again adopted, right? So then they, 250 years after the Prophet, get their own version of the Quran and then use that now, right, as their basis to establish their thing to now work with the same Vatican, Rome, to destabilize all of the so-called Moorish or Black empires in which now they become destabilized. You see what I'm saying? All after the fall of Bernard. And then start to impose these Catholic, draconian, Nazi type instructions on the so-called religion. Because this is not the original Islam. This is not the syncretic Islam that we live in that I showed you that was that got the name of Allah on the Temple of Abydos going back however many thousand years. This is now the new Nazi Catholic version that was instituted on the pale Arab side. You see what I'm saying? By the people who came up under the same way the white boys did and then fell to the jurisdiction. There's a quote from uh, 
Heraclius, who was the basically the Roman Caesar from about 610 to 641, as told by Al Jamani Al Shahid Bukhari, right? And it's saying he says he Muhammad will soon occupy this place under my feet, and I knew from the scriptures I would like to meet him, and if I were with him, I would wash his feet, and his kingdom will expand. At night, I looked to the stars and saw the leader of the Arabs, right? Now, we know it can't be Arab because the term Arab was more of a later term that came later. So they're just using that as a placeholder for whatever the original word was, right? Who practiced the circumcision and become the conqueror, right? Because this was a subdivision. This is a subdivision. And whenever they want to take control of a, of a nation state or group of people, they go to the people that's at the very bottom, right? And then promise them to prop their leader up. And then once they leader get in, they now control the state through him. Right? Then they rewrite the history. So up here is an image of El Rasuli, the last so-called Moorish uh, pirate that went against Roosevelt, made him look crazy. And this is Sean Connery playing him in the movie. With the ones around him from the movie. This movie is called The Wind and the Lion. But he was one of the people fighting to maintain the imperial aspect of Morocco. That the emperor and them had succeeded, um, he means succeeded to, meaning gave up on. And then fell under the jurisdiction of who? The French. You see? The damn French. So the goal was to break down all of the clans where they was at. The Idris, the al Mu'tawid, the al Mohad, the Marinid, the Watasid, the Sa'adid, the Sa'adid or the Sa'adite, and the Aluite, right? We have the blood of all of these in us. <laughs> you understand? They only got a quarter or this or that based upon what desert tribe they are part of because they, again, are part of the Islam that was against the prophet. They are part of the Islam that wanted to kill or that killed Ali. And so when Ali came again as the prophet, Jew Ali, Islam, our Islam was then justified or rec realized as the Islam. And so they had to create other offshoots of that because of the Islam that they had nurtured on their own that was connected again to the Vatican, or that is connected to the Vatican. Same way Christianity is. So you have the Bay, the Day, the Al, the Ali, the Pasha, the Al, and Allah. All of the clans. But of the seven clans, we are two clan Mawaiti. And thus far, the two clans is at the top, the eels and the bays, we the ones that's at odds with each other. Which is why the so-called black people can't get together. Right? So all of this is manifested or created through what they call, or what came to be known as the Muslim Brotherhood. You understand? And why there was such a push to get black people to become Muslims. This is now after the prophet had made over a hundred million dollars or however many millions of dollars by showing people their nationality, by reorganizing people after the, the Marcus Garvey debacle, right? And by bringing people into the true knowledge of Islam in terms of the true tenets of it, which is what? Keeping your body pure and clean with water, right? Which means what? Washing your hands and all of that, right? And then you have others that came under him as adepts that brought the different aspects of that. CM Bay brought the, the solar and, and this, this, and that, right? So these aspects of Islam that's happening domestically, internationally now is being, you know what I'm saying? Um low-key focused on by people like Jacob Astor and Guggenheim and these people, like I said, who themselves are Moors, who themselves know the value of the Moorish Empire and being descendants of it, although they are living in the times of the, the lighter side is who, who, you know, Who's really in charge? Like whoever's lighter skin is going to be the one we're going to 
know what I'm saying? Who you gonna look to first? Meanwhile, internationally, like I said, you got people like these people that's um that's doing a thing. In the middle, he done set up the kingdom as a Moroccan, which they never been heard of. But there's so many other Arabs now that's also calling themselves Abdul Aziz. You don't know which one. And so through this confusion, the one that they wind up hooking up with the Illuminati niggas. Churchill and them, he winds up putting an order out to destroy all of the Moroccan quarter that was in Mecca at the time. This is why when you go to Morocco, uh, Mecca and you ask for the Moroccan quarter or you go to Jerusalem to the Moroccan quarter, they all destroy it today because these Arabs destroyed it. Those were built by our ancestors. And then to get rid of Isidore Strauss and him and Astor and Guggenheim, they uh, got them to invest in the Titanic, got them to get on the boat and then sank it. And it killed everybody else in the ritual to do that. And who took all the pictures of everybody before they got on the boat? The Jesuit priests. After they were gone now, they were now free to fund uh, their agenda. And their agenda was basically to use their version of extremism to then infect everybody internationally at the rise of the so-called um, Arab state, because now this is where they get all the bread from. Meanwhile, all of this is being paid for low-key by um, the Freemasons here in America and <laughs> the royal family in Britain. <laughs> here go Prince Charles after he was made a shape. They made him a shake. <laughs> this is why the prophet said that you were Muslim and not a Muslim. This is why he said you were more, you see what I'm saying, and not an Arab. <laughs> There's a difference. You understand? Yeah, but he is descended from T.E. Lawrence, you see what I'm saying, of Arabia, who they use to establish what we call the so-called Arabs today, right? But T.E. Lawrence, let me see. Here you go. This nigga wasn't playing. Like, he was really for real. When you look at the movie of Lawrence Arabia, you'll see. High degree Freemason. And through him, they were able to build the the British help basically build the architecture of what we understand the Middle East to be today. Before he is the one that coined it, they used him to establish the so-called states that we know today as Egypt and all of that. And then from there, <laughs> they set up a perpetual slave network to be able to funnel children to the royal families of Europe for slave labor, as well as for cannibalism and all of the, the blood rituals that they have to do as citizens of the society Draconis under the Prince of Drakenberg and everything else. You see what I'm saying? So all of this is going on while they talking to us about how we were slaves and this, this and that. You got the prophet here in America flipping it trying to establish an a entity for us to be able to do business or be protected through. You got uh, <laughs> the real Abdul Aziz over there. And all of this was a part of what they called the plan of the experts. See, remember I told you, Knights Templar. The Templars are now very rich, powerful, rich, powerful, independent church, state, European, worldwide. The French king together with the Pope, has conspired to confiscate all their assets and power and destroy their power in Europe. So this is why they were shut down in the 13th century, because all that money that they was taking was really taken to support who? Not the white people in Rome, but the true so-called black nobility 
that's running Europe. The niggas you don't see. The ones who's now, who Aster, dark skin Aster, dark skin Strauss, dark skin uh, Guggenheim, and these niggas was related to. The real side of the family. See what I'm saying? We got rid of them. Exactly. Right? So all of that bread that the Templars had gotten in the 13th century, all that, all of that was under the jurisdiction of the people I just exposed, uh, uh, described to you, and they were still in uh, uh, loyalty to not only us as people, but the ancient way that the Moors was doing business. Right? This culminated in what was called the plan of experts that was supposed to be brought out in 1928, of which was spoken about and met about at the convention at Cuba. Which is why the Prophet Nobu Jali was so important in that. This is why they created so many different systems and so many other personalities to take people away from that. This is why Garvey was telling people that they wasn't from America, they need to all go back to Africa. So that way every his man, Walter Plecker, could establish the, the resource to now reconfiscate them or redesignate them as Negroes, which then gave the state control of their estates. And then I guess when he figured out that's what his role in it, he wanna go public, they like, nah. And they lock him up. Now all his followers is out there. They don't know what to do. So here come the prophet come and he correct everything. He let them know that it's not what they say it is. It's the opposite. Whatever Garvey said was cool, but he was doing that based upon the obligation that he was under, based upon who he was around. That obligation, again, is with these different... Nice. Nice. Great shape. He was with the same orchestration. So all of this is why the rise of Islam was then time with, or the rise of Nazism was then the rise of Islam, or was tied into the rise of the religion of Islam, based upon the pre-colonial world, and now all of the governments expanding the Muslim, the Muslim Brotherhood, expanding itself into all the different governments, and the Muslim Brotherhood just being a new version of the so-called Templars or whatever else they was dealing with. That's why you see pictures like this. See what I'm saying? This is him kissing the Quran in front of the Cardinal. Now, the thing that you don't, people don't know about the Vatican and the Cardinal, the naming aspect of it, the Cardinals or the group of Cardinals are called Moors. So the ritual then is he is kissing the Quran in front of a shape, an Arab shape, and a Moor. <laughs> he's standing between the two aspects of Islam. That's why the black, that's why the, 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 the priest is in red. That's why the cardinals wear red. Everything is the ritual. The ritual is what allows them to maintain the fiction. And then they get everybody to want to be down with it by using celebrity and, and mythos as a means to engender people to want to be something that they're not. You know what I'm saying? So somebody that's always paid to say somebody else's words, right, is different than somebody who writes their own words and says them. One may not be better or worse, but what makes one better than the other is that one is the conduit. But it also may mean that one can't do what the other does. The only stipulation is the integrity of one or the other. But we're in the era now where integrity means nothing because Takashi can come out and do more in terms of numbers materially than anybody else. But what he's doing spiritually is worse.
You know what I'm saying? But people would rather be entertained. This is the same thing that was going on in the Gladiator. People wanted to say, oh, well, how can you just be there and just watch in the Gladiator times of Rome, just watch people get ate up and ripped up by lions? The same way people can sit there and watch somebody get killed by the police and film it. <laughs> Not stop the police from killing the person. The same way. You want to stop it, but you don't want to stop it to the point that you give up your position. And we're all guilty of that. At some point or the other. But at some point, you got to understand that they all have the same origin. Which is why we were supposed to be a distinct people for a reason. So when somebody says, oh, well, more, that was just a, a derogatory term that came from the Greeks. And the Greeks were just calling black people more as a, as a derogatory this. So, so what that says is that this person's argument is coming solely from a Greek perspective. Meaning that this then person acknowledges that the Greeks were a real people. When we can already read the myth of a Negro past and the author in that says that like the Greeks, that like the term Greek, Negro was a created, was a created idea given to people who no longer had an identity. This is in the book. So that means if you are judging or you're trying to use a Greek word, which we then know that the term Greek, when they really, what they're really saying is Macedonian or Ionian or Mycenaean, right? And when we talk about those people, all of them people were vassals of Carthage. And we know that the Carthaginians themselves was Moors, who themselves were Sidonians, which then made them biblical, which then brings us back to our prophet talking about us being descended from these peoples. Therefore, if you are only using the Greek term to identify it, but then you don't speak Greek, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You are speaking English saying that this word means this in Greek about these people and that these people shouldn't call themselves that because it means that. But then you use in the same language that you're saying that these people they shouldn't use have all identified with. That's the problem with scholarship when it's tainted with limited worldview based on ego and and um, being paid off, you know, working for the man. Because what that does is it limits your view of what you can really do the knowledge to. And the fact that different places call different people different things but they may be talking about the same thing. We call it Japan, but they used to call it Nahon. But now you have people in Japan that don't refer to it as Nahon, they call it Japan. Based on us, or well, based on them dropping a bomb on them and then calling them Japanese. You understand? <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? So yeah, they need they still Nihonese, right? But they Japanese. And these Japanese are racist. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? More racist to the darker nations in the world that never dropped a nuclear bomb on them than they are to the so-called white men that's still exploiting them and they military. Same thing with the Chinese. They're not even really Chinese. The real Chinese are Manchurians. They speak Mandarin or Cantonese or something like that. This was all done during the Roman, this during the, again, the Roman, the wars, the World War I and World War II, which we're about to get into, which is fishy. <laughs> so right here, I'm showing you, this is the Nazis with the, with the Arabs <laughs> under the gold fringe fascist flag with the crescent and the star, with the Nazis. So this is the birth, this is the beginning of the the, the um the Muslim Brotherhood. Not the beginning. The Muslim Brotherhood really started through the Templars, but it is sent through the French Templars and then white Christian slaves and who were given 
lands to hold for on behalf of the Moors of the higher families that were only receiving the wealth from these lands and then use them as proxy drones or soldiers to ship the wealth back to them in France. But when we say France now, we're talking about old France, which again is Louisiana and all of that, as well as the land of Gaul that we talk about in Europe, because that's Gaul. All right. You call it what it is based on what it was, not what we we were taught it was. Therefore, we undo the spell of the whole thing. So based on all of that being said, this 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 reliance or this need to create the the or pervert the the old Moorish way of doing stuff. And then supplanting that with these Arab Muslims who then use that era, just like the Reconstructionists, to paint all of these these illuminated pictures and all of this stuff and bleach them out and make them look white. The same way the Chinese did. Look at the Chinese pictures and the Arab pictures and the European pictures, and they all look like they was painting this stuff by the same people during the same time. To the point where you could see the smudge marks in them. With some of the pictures, the face be white, but the hands be black still. They couldn't get everything. This is what the monks who were locked up in friars that were locked up in the towers was doing for all of them years. You understand? And then that was brought to these Corvinian Moors, and these Corvinian Moors then say, yeah, this is how we're going to knock them out of power in their dominions. We're going to make them believe, we're going to make their people believe that they God, that these devils is God. And then we're going to move in for the kill. Right? So from this brotherhood or from this agreement comes all of the woe that <laughs> we was dealing with there. So first you had the first you had the culmination of this came after 1899 and then with the coronation of Elizabeth. Illicit birth. <laughs> the illicit birth. <laughs> right? So this was the public coronation. It's real nice, right? You see the Gothic knights and all of that. These is all Templars. So when we talk about, so when you think Rothschilds, think Templars. When you think of of, of Elizabeth royal families, those are all Templars. And these Templars are witches and and warlocks, right? Who from time immemorial came from people who were cannibals. And so our ancestors created little hamlet societies where they could almost rule over themselves, pay us all the money, and then subsist upon killing and eating whatever each other. You understand? So this was the Christian ceremony. This is real history. Oh, let me show you that. This is her. This is her at the real ceremony. Okay? You see, they sheeped up, right? But what they talk about, or what they'll say is the Druid, right? This is in their Druid. This is at the Druid coronation. This happened before the actual coronation. So this was the real coronation she was taking. This is her position coming in under the new regime. Of these of these these devils. That's why they had to kill the Archduke Ferdinand. Whenever they kill a white or somebody in them that's white that's down with them like that, that person was black in some way. They had something black in them. John Nicholas was black. George was black. Anastasia and them was black. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is them. This is her getting it in <coughs> and being wed <coughs> at the same ceremony. <coughs> okay.
miss the auto fill. Oh wait. Exactly. So now this was the one that wasn't on TV. So when you watch, when we watch the, the drama that they have on Netflix, The Crown and all that, The Crown mean Corona, remember that. And that whole show was basically a fluff piece to kind of make them look better than they really was because we know that they was really what they really are, you know. So they, these Muslims, right, who are also Druids, who are also Christians, basically use this union to establish themselves not only in the Middle East, but then also to create the mythos around them. So this is an instance. They had to justify it. Like the Jews were not, the Khazarians were not a, a race of slaves. They were considered a slave race because of the ancient world's understanding of how they came into the world stage, you know what I'm saying? And so um, it was no understanding. So blacks had to be reshaped into that due to their dominance in the world up until that point. So the only way to do that was to help destabilize them. So the mythos that was created during reconstruction went into everything. So right here, what you're seeing, I'm gonna show you here, you know what this is? This Stonehenge. You know what I'm saying? Like this Stonehenge. That was there for thousands of years. Right? Right? This Stonehenge. But that's not it. They created the war, like I said, to foster the thing and further denationalize us to the point of not or not remember we could declare. And so the same people that was dropping the bombs was the same people that was over here paying for it, basically. Like we know that, but but this is what I'm saying. Like this is the proof. Like, like here go Obama standing in front of it. Look. It's <laughs> great. Then is this. Same way they move the pyramids, same way they move anything else or created or recreated. They did the same thing with this. Now they did whole ceremonies and rituals. You understand? You know how many rituals, blood sacrifices they be doing at this place? Telling the people has been here for thousands of years and this is what you've been doing and this is why we gotta eat the babies here, whatever. They just built this thing in like 1954. It gets better though. Because while they was preparing to come, remember the British royal family is German. They're all German. This is her, this is Elizabeth. But remember, I told you she had a, a Muslim, her great grandfather had a Muslim tutor because her great grandfather on the other side was a more named Talano, which again was running the Morano clan, right? Who was allegedly brothers of Victoria. Now, the wild thing is when they was paying for the war, World War One, World War Two. There's movies, I just realized, where they said there was movies back then that was talking about how fake it was. So I started researching now, I started seeing these. 
what they call decoy tanks. Allegedly, they just would put these around and then the enemy would think that they was real tanks and then just blow them up. But strategically, I don't know what they would gain from that. You know what I'm saying? In the long run, like, okay, they just bombed some place that we could have been using for something else, for some blow up tanks. So I started doing the knowledge. Everybody was doing it. That was the United States. This is Japan. That's why when you read the book, The Creature from Jekyll Island and other books about paperclip, you can, and specifically when you read the autobiography of um, Prescott Bush, you'll see a consistency in them talking about how much America influenced the Nazis at the point. And you can see that it really started here. So it would make sense that they would all come here after the whole thing happened. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> so like I said, the war buffs will come on and say, oh, well, this was just because they were, you know, when they, when they start talking like that. <laughs> oh, it was just because this is how it. Mm -hmm. So it makes you think about today. You understand how they be talking and showing you all the military stuff and all the stuff they doing today. Like, remember, man, all of this is, is Hollywood, too. You know what I'm saying? A lot of this stuff I'm seeing over the years, over the centuries is just bluff and story. Just getting people to cop to what you think it is. And then once they say it's that and you can do what you want. And what's happening, I think, with the Trump thing like this right here is a whole town they built that didn't exist <laughs> just so somebody could bomb it <laughs> like that. It don't make sense. It don't make sense, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's thousands of war veterans and people like that that actually died in this type of stuff. So, you know, them finding out seeing why it may explain why the government treats them the way that they do and laughs at them and dehumanizes them experiments on them and all that because it's, it's all this fake <laughs> so that corresponding nature of the the fusion between all of these factions coming together you see what I'm saying, created this vacuum that created the pipeline between the Nazis, the Freemasons, and all of the other groups, whatever nation nationalities was going to be down with them in the order. The original order of the Moors of Seville was a charity order of Moors. That's why they call it the Negro Order, who were kicked out of after Granada and maintained themselves being Muslim on the law, even amongst the ridicule of the Catholics. So they, they put the mask on with the conical heads because that's what they would do to the broken moors um, that were left in the Spanish areas. So they would walk around with the... Um, mass on and all of that so that way they could do the charity for whatever moors was still in the area and then still maintain their lives when they took the hoods off and all that so of course that was switched is an image of them or what was an image of them from back in the day so you see what i'm saying nothing these people got came from them 
See how dark they betrayed them? Especially this one. That translated into the order of Seville that's there to this day, has been there. But of course, it's not black people in it. But I'm just saying, this is the origin of it. See the Moors head? So what these people started doing, like I said, through the extreme Jesuit back Islam stuff was getting everybody to basically commit mass genocide, basically in the name of the Pope, because all of this is happening really in the Pope name, all to harvest pineal organs, specifically melanin carbon, and then created groups again here in America and then abroad that are basically all the same, basically Nazi. That's why the Muslim thing, the way that they got it hooked up today is messed up because a lot of the Muslims that are coming from these African countries already have CIA records from Africa being used as assets. So when they come over here, they run them through whatever CIA desk or whatever desk they got running through the mosque. Which is why there's such a distinction in how they deal with people that's not from their communities like that. But you'll see a consistent pattern, especially places like Philly, where you'll see like the, the, the black Muslim outside the store selling the oils and the, and the soaps and the butters and all that. And in the store itself, the Arab is inside selling the frankincense urns and the rugs and the, the saris and all of that. And that's consistent anywhere in the world. Because all of these people are given the same doctrine. They all been not supplied since World War One, World War Two, and so orders like the Moorish Orthodox Church, for instance, which was an offshoot of the Order of the Golden Dawn, established by Timothy Leary, established a commune under by a guy named Wally Fard in the sixties around Montauk Point, where all of this, which again was the nexus point for all of this happening, because Montauk Point was one of the bases that they was using in World War I and World War II. And where at the time it was called Camp Hero, where they was running all of the mind control and the, and the children. Here. So we in Islam, they, they act like the 5% and stuff like that isn't is new, but it's not. Because way back again in the oh here it is. First, let me show you this. This is her getting her inauguration. This is what started her baby in Korea. Thank you. And put her on her way. Look at all these look at all these people. All these people 
had people, and these people is the people you watch on TV, people that's out here killing people, eating people. That's these people. What I was going to say was we, the science of the type of Islam that we are part of or practice is referred to in, in the 13th century, it was referred to as Harufi. Okay. This Harufi was is named after a man, after a more. Harufi, the Harufi movement was founded by Fasad Ali. Uh, Saeed Muhammad's direct descendant, master chief, an astrobat in what they call uh, Iran today. Harufi doctrine, according to which was absolute truth, which was hot, is founded in the essential substance in the alphabet's letter. And the remarkable syncretic feature of the Harufi was the innovative blending of mysticism, Ishmael Ali, Ishmael Ali, Ishmaeli symbolism and the emphasis on the number seven. <laughs> in an online article published in the Encyclopedia Britannica, the prominent Rufi member was a famous poet named Sayyid Imam, Imam, Imam Dendi Nasimi, and was a great clear picture about Fazi Allah and the teachings of the Rufis and the describing of Nasimi's involvement with the Rufis. He became acquainted with the founder of the extremist religious sect, and the Rufis in the Iranian mysticism, Farik Allah of Ashtabar, was also played to death for his heretical beliefs when in 1401-1402. See? This is when they're going against the Moors and they're using and they're using the um so-called religion again of Islam to do that. Because when you flay somebody to death, that's a Catholic thing. You understand? That's what the Catholics used to do. That's what the priests do. Flagellation. See what I'm saying? When you ask the Hebrew Israelites if they practice apostolic secession, and if they say yes, they Catholics. <laughs> you understand? They all Catholics, yo. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, all these dudes that's talking about this, when you're a Freemason, you're a Catholic. That's Catholicism. When you're a Freemason, that's Catholicism. That's Roman Catholicism. You know what I'm saying? When you're a Muslim, you're a Catholic. When you're a Christian, you're a Catholic. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say, yo. That's what I'm showing and proving. Like, it's all Catholicism. And, and Catholicism is Satanism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight up. Like, that's what it is. The basis of Catholicism is agape, right? That's the Greek version of love. But agape love is homosexual love, right? Why? Because way back in the days, way, 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 Way back in the days, you understand? The bay, the eels and bays who with the wheels and ways put these niggas on goat, little goats, and they had to do what they had to do. So when you see these niggas talking about they the goat, they the this, they the goat, they talk about trying to be one of these dudes. This is the Freemasonic secret. See how separate in this picture these moors are from these people? You understand? So when they talking about they riding the goat, Roger, exactly, more. This is what they talking about. This is what I'm showing you. This is what you down with. This is what the apron was about. It's why you got to wear an apron. It's why you got to have writing on your head. On your head. You know what I'm saying? Why you got to do all of that? Because these dudes, yeah, these dudes is wilding. And now you got moors that's trying not to be this, to be that. Again, in the red, you see the red? Just like the so-called Catholics, right? Who are called Moors at the Vatican. That's their station. That's why they are the ones, the Cardinals, the Moors, symbolically are the ones that pick the Pope. See what I'm saying? So these dudes, like I said, these dudes is just following the thing. That's why they're the Imperial Grand Wizard and the Cyclops and the, the the all of that. And then in the Nazi side of that, you had the hammer skins, the hammer skins and the the um Aryan nation groups and these dudes 
It's all gripped up. Thank you. It's all gripped up. Thank you. It's all gripped up going to the going to the, the um to the supermarket with rocket launches and stuff. That's these things. The irony is that the fact that they're Freemasons means again, not only are they Muslims in secret, they Muslims, excuse me, Muslims in secret, they're also Catholics. I'm telling you, they all take the fourth vow when they hang the, the black man from the tree and all that. That's based on Acts, I, I believe it's Acts 511, when it talks about that the, the, the children of Christ or the who of the blood of Christ would always be hung from the tree. That's the ritual that they're into. That's a blood ritual. That's a, a passed down ritual. There needs to be something in the so-called black community where you can actually go and get those pictures and basically trace where those people are today and who their descendants was. You would be surprised at who you find in those pictures if you were to do that. But you have no mechanism in the community to even think about approaching a project like that. You, we got to figure out how to get people off of the adrenochrome. <laughs> Not even realizing they own it. Drugs, all of that, that's the slow walk to that stuff. But to really get into it and all of that, you have to be of a certain mind state and caliber that you are willing to be infested. And they've, they've got the people now down to the point where they feel they could do that. Right? That has nothing to do with, with us. This is the worm that they stick in the eye and then, and then pound it in there to activate it because you, you got to go through trauma to get it working. This is, the, this is why the eye is always seen above the other one. The one that they stick it in is the one that they celebrate the most, which is why that's the one they always show. It's beyond pattern with them. It's, it's, it's ritual, but it's so ritual now that it's a name. Like it's a part of the actual world culture. And that's what has to be heard. So the Declaration of Nationality, putting one under Muslim customary law, that is what automatically makes us separate from it. Because according to their estimation, Muslim customary law is a separate distinction from Roman canon. When they say canon law, canon law is draconian law. Canon is short for draconian. They just taking the DRA C off the front, the DRA off the front. Yeah, this is the one eye covering. This is it. They hook you up for the injection, and then once you take it, they gotta pound it into you. Whether it be a fist or however, I don't know. But what I'm saying is the ritual on how it's done or how it's been done anciently. This ain't some new stuff. This is what they was doing in the 13th century. This is what we was, these Corvinians did to these niggas. You understand? They didn't learn it themselves. They, this is what they evolved. This is what it looks like on the brain. On the prefrontal lobe. Allegedly. You know, you got to say allegedly because people want to be like, oh, that's Photoshop, like whatever, man. So in the merging of Islam and the open merging of Islam into Chrislam, um, they had a ceremony, like I said, and they <coughs> agreed on it. So 
That's why the Pope was asking for that. That's why ISIS had to surrender. Because again, ISIS was created out of Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda was created out of um uh what do you call it? Um Hezbollah, Hezbollah was created, you know, out of Hamas. Hamas was created out the PLO. And when we trace all of those things back, it go back to the same dude. It go back to this dude. Go back to this dude, a Khazarian Mamelu from the old days. Okay, who um, is basically the descendant or the guy that passed on it, everything to this dude, who basically is represent all of the Muslim world. I don't know if y'all knew, but all y'all, everybody that's a Muslim got a representative. So he's a representative of this. That's why when uh, your boy came out with uh, Farrakhan, it was an issue. And concealed it until he came out of office. But essentially, it all goes back to the, this guy, the Mufti of Berlin, who was Hitler's Mufti, and who was also a Jew, <laughs> and who was one of the main people who who pushed for Auschwitz and Dachau and all the places that put these people, that Dupont, who paid for the ovens, Hugo Boss, who paid for the uniforms, um, Prescott Bush, who established the bank loans. Like, this is real. This is not this is what it is. This is re reality. This is what happened. This is what shaped our lives today. The reason why you can't just go to a foreign country right now and establish a business and not have to pay U.S. tax is because of the Trading with the Enemy Act and all that shit that happened because of, trade, because of uh, Prescott Bush. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what's happening. This is what has led to the situation that we're in now. Understand? Like, it's serious. It's not a joke. And every time they try to flip something, something else come out on the other side. Like, right now, they just said that they done, uh, they done rescued 35,927 children. Rescued from a giant thermonuclear base underground. Like, this, this is real. Matter of fact, I got a clearer picture of it. what people are dealing with, man. <laughs> yeah, Arafat, all of that. The PLO, all of those guys are Nazis. <laughs> all of that. PLO, Hamas, Hezbollah, ISIS, which is CIA created, Al-Qaeda, CIA created. All of that was created during the 80s when they was flipping everything on Saddam. But essentially all of that is a part of the reason why all of the funding goes to that. Get, get this book. This is why we're beset with Nazis in our lives. These people that are doing this are Nazis. The guy that shot this brother allegedly blessed the dead, if it even happened, but it did. It's horrible. Um, he's on. They got pictures of him in the clan. <laughs> it's it's not a, a assumption. It's not this is what it is. Like he's proud. You know what I'm saying because that's how free they are in their society. They're so free that they feel that they could just shoot niggas in the street and hang them again. That's where they're at. Trump ain't telling them to do that. I'm not saying being an advocate for him. I'm just saying he's not forcing people to do that. He's not condoning that. Same way Obama ain't speak on shit. Nobody had a problem. <laughs> now I'm saying now, now they want everybody to speak on something. Like why? You know how many black men died under Obama? This nigga Obama had a beer with this dude that broke in Henry Louis Gay house and almost killed him. And Henry Louis Gay's dumb ass is there to, to sit there and have a beer with him. That's how brutalized black men are in this society. 
They have no standing. You understand? So again, when you see the clan, what I'm what I'm saying is that these, yeah, they're the clan and all that. But what you're seeing is the invisible enemy. When you talk about the invisible enemy, look up Trump invisible enemy speech. When you talk about the invisible enemy, he's talking about the invisible empire. The invisible empire is all of these guys in collusion that can plausibly deny that they're actually a part of it. And even if they are a part of the clan, it doesn't necessarily mean that what happened to the people that they killed was based on them being racist. That's how rigged. The game is, you understand? Because everything runs on extortion, extortion and abortion. That's what runs everything. That's what gets the most funding in everything. You know what I'm saying? So, top of most of this is this dude. He's the other dude that's singing right now in a joint on everybody. If you look at these symbols, these are the same symbols that you see in the Blade movie. I believe it's Blade 2. Blade 1 or Blade 2. Because it's the same cult. Everything that we think is not real is real. And whenever you see rappers and entertainers and they had uh, Roman numerals tattooed on them, they're a part of the cult. They were sexually brought up in the cult. So that's Justin Bieber, Rahana, all of these people. Okay. What 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 Negroes do you know no Roman numerals off top like that? If I said X C C M X L X M, you would know what that meant. <laughs> you would know what that meant. You don't know. There's people who study that jargon don't even know. It's all fake. So I'm gonna say like it's all fake. I'm really, I'm really tired of stuff I'm looking up not being real, and the real stuff not being fake. <laughs> That's where I'm at now. Like, man, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, so uh, for Rufis, H U R U is the ancient Moorish custom of basically how we live today, or an interpretation of how we live today. That again was founded by the ancient Iranians who themselves were connected to us through ancient Canaan and everything else. As we say, um, the other thing I was going to say was, um, yeah, so anything draconian, anything liberal, so draconian or canon, Roman canon law, that's what that is. That literally means from the canon to be shot out, to be used as an act of war, whereas um, everything else is just subject to whatever interpretation is going on. That's why you see so many similarities between the Vatican's, between the, the Romans and the Arab Islamists. Like when you look at images of Moors and stuff from back in the days, they dress different than the regular Arabs and stuff that they dress now. He was dealing with the Rug and all of that. Is allegedly a symbol of the Shroud of Torin, but now I'm looking at the Shroud of Torin as a symbol of them ripping the face off for the adrenochrome. See, this right here is Catholics. This right here is Muslims. What's the difference? Nothing. So 
modern Islam is basically all Wahhabism. The Sunnis have adopted it. Everybody, every sect has basically adopted it, but the Moors. <laughs> Real talk. Nation of Islam had, everybody has, except us. So we're the only ones that's practicing real Islam. I'm not trying to diss nobody. When I say real Islam, I'm talking about the ancient aspect of it that was based upon man, woman, child, not this thing that they got out here now, I'm trying to flip everybody to something else and creating these fake wars. When we're talking about false flags and stuff, homie, like World War One, World War Two. Those were some of the biggest false flags in the world. Because in the end, it wasn't for the betterment of mankind. It was to wipe away what was left of the so-called black nobility. And they create the pseudo world that we in now that's now falling apart. Look, this bill was passed back, I think, in 2002. U.S. Senate bill entire, declares entire USA to be a battleground. A bill passed late last night, 93 to 7 votes, declares the United States of America a battleground. What this means is that the U.S. military can now operate with impunity and grant U.S. military unchecked power to arrest, detain, interrogate, even assassinate U.S. citizens with impunity. It has been in effect. <laughs> but what's happened is this dude Trump then used this against them. That's why he's able to activate the military in a silent war without any of them knowing. Same way Reagan and them did with Iran-Contra, he doing against them. <laughs> him and the 200, whoever is allegedly with him. It, that's what they say, though. You dig? I don't believe that any of this is based in the reality that we think. All we can do is understand that it's from a perspective of something that's happening now. It's another picture allegedly from an underground. I'm going in, getting people out the cages. This is what Panda and all of that was about. I'm talking about the panda, the panda eyes and the children. That was them basically just showing the from the rape of the child, they bust the capillaries in the eyes, which then forced the trauma, which gives them the dark circles. So I'll give you a different perspective on the designer song and designing women. You know what I'm saying? And they talk about pandas not mating in in China. You know what I'm saying? Think, think about what they was really talking about. Man. Everything is cold for them. This Hitler daughter, she run Germany now. <laughs> I'm saying Castro's son run Canada and they were all fascist communists. The Black Panthers after Fred Hampton and them was communists. <laughs> That's why they had to get rid of the whole early Panther leadership. The ones that was really doing the work. Everybody else was actors. The ones that didn't go along went to jail. <laughs> The ones that found out, was thought that was real, found out, and then sold out, went further leave. How else could you explain Eldridge Cleaver becoming a, becoming a campaign um, enthusiast for Ronald Reagan and marrying a white girl? Why would Angela Davis marry a white woman? Oh, it's not about race. It's always about race because that's the psychological operation that's been running longest on melanated people in America. So anyone says that it's not about race is actually down with it. And we see that the origins of this go all the way back to the very first Roman blood eating cannibals <laughs> that we put under heavy jurisdiction and heavy restriction. All of the Muslim beheadings and all of that, that was only beheadings and stuff was only reserved for honored enemies. Everybody else, you just ran through. Or ceremonial situations. That's why the devil's head was always taken. However, now that the uh, the the devil head takers is now the devil's, what you gonna do? So, like I said, while this is happening on the underside, on the upper side, we got 
all of this stuff happening with black folk, which is why they try to shut down the courts, stop people from doing the name corrections and all of that. However, that's not the side of the government that's going at everybody. That's the side of the government that is at odds with going to jail. You understand what I'm saying? So only in this sick world could somebody like this dude, Obama, like I said, his mother, who was a paid CIA prostitute, honey pot sex slave for the CIA, is only crazy in a world where she would produce a son who was pseudo black, given a fake African father, but then a, a rich Indonesian grandfather. She was sent to the grandson of Mr. Talano to marry into that family so that way he could have access to the Indonesian gold hoard that I've been talking to y'all about from the beginning. That's his mother. This is his mother, Stanley, which means she was probably born. It was probably born um, a girl or whatever. And then this is Gaga, and then this is the adrenochrome. That's what the movie Cast Away was about. It was about him being separated from adrenochrome and having to wean himself off it. And then when he got home, he couldn't relate to nobody else because everybody in his circle was still on adrenochrome. <laughs> the Templars used to harvest the adrenochrome from the vanquished enemies on the battlefield, but they called it the Grail. And they would bring it back to their masters, who again were the Moors who knew how to use all that. That's what I'm trying to say. Like these dirty Christian Anziatic Moors was wild. Get the book Papal Magic, and it goes all into what I'm talking about. Get another book called Pirate Utopia. Because all of the ones that went renegade, they all became pirates. And then they went into the whole equine and sea magic and all of that. That's where they all get the whole pirates of the Caribbean and all that which they now going to make all females because they want everybody to be gay. Females aren't even seeing these all female movies, <laughs> these female empowering movies. So, you know, is that they said they want to inject estrogen in men to combat the coronavirus. This is what I'm saying. Like they look up for any way in and at every situation, it looked bad. And then, it looked good for them, and then something happened, and it gets shut down. This is the original painting of Mohammed, peace be upon him, coming in and taking Constantinople. Mohammed II coming in and taking Constantinople. This painting right here, there's another one, an older one. This is what the so-called Jews or the Muslims was wearing and stuff back then. You see how you see the Jews with the block on their head if you want one? They based it on this, on this. This is ancient Phoenician technology that she wearing. If she was to go into the desert right now, she could be out there with that on her head and survive. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They erased all of this from us. So you've been seeing this picture all of this time and not knowing, no, this is Mohammed II. This is who took Jews. This is who took, um, what you call it? Constantinople. This is who took the head, again, of the great Satan, the last king, one of the last kings took his head and shut down the baby instead. Shut it all down for them. That's why Rome went into the dark ages. We had to get rid of all them people. We had to Kuru, get rid of all the Kuru, get rid of everything. Start from scratch. We're the first people to put the world into self-quarantine. That started with us based on them having the bubonic plague 
and dying from dysentery from not cooking their food properly, which created the worms, but they were able to culture and then manipulate into demonic entities. This is real, man. We be like, well, why did it happen? Well, why? Well, I'm, I'm telling you, B. This is it. This is what they spend billions and millions of dollars for. It's what they murk niggas for. They can't do that now because it's all over. It's already done. This dude is going to jail. The attorney general called this nigga and said, look, don't leave the country for a little while, all right? Soon as this nigga Flynn got out, <laughs> he called the nigga, look it up. It's like yesterday, day before yesterday. He's the one that brought all of this in. All of these Muslim extremists, all of these guys shooting these schools up. These are ex-jihadi white boys that was recruited from the Midwest that was radicalized in Syria and Iran and all of that after they raped them and mind controlled them through the ISIS state, then sent them back to America to shoot up a school or whatever under a trigger. Think I'm lying? Read the Podesta emails from the WikiLeaks. Read the the what you call it emails from the CIA director Brennan and them on the uranium situation. Read them. They they literally say it. <laughs> they recruit more black women into the situation through kidnapping and rape and all that. Read about the 139 girls, they just free from the Boko Haram. The Boko Haram is the black ISIS. And all of those dirty niggas, all of them niggas is paid for by who? The French. To kidnap girls, bring them in and sell them. <laughs> bring them over here, put them in braiding salons. This is what's going on, bro. The hair you buy and the hair these women is buying is coming from these rituals, is coming from these situations. And as soon as they rake them off from the black girls, through the girls over there, they then put the hair into a press that got sigils and demons and shit on. And then spray it with that shit. And then sell it to you. This is who's running the, this was who was running the country when Obama was running shit. You think these people care about us as more? Look at what Obama did to Libya. Where's the African plan to do that? How they gonna do that and deal with the Chinese? They can't. So now that they can't get kids no other way, they want to use the virus now as a means to come in people's house and take kids. See what I'm saying? Because all the other pipelines are shut down. <laughs> but the Secretary of State put out the joint and said that this is still not a national emergency. This is a crisis. And therefore the Constitution is not suspended. You heard? <laughs> Put an executive memo out to all the governors. But well, half of the governors, the ones that's against everything, these dudes is all illegal. So the chick Omar, the, the chick Ocasio, all of these dudes is ritualistic murderers. So that's why we're not Muslims. I mean, that's why we're not Muslims per se. You can practice that, but that's why they say that the Moors ruled over the Muslims, the Christians, the Jews in harmony, right? Therefore, they were different because they practicing or we practicing the old ways of doing stuff and nobody want us to do that. Everybody want us to do stuff like they stuff so we can not be us. Because to be us means being them is a problem. A good 
uh, fiction book you can read if you got time is this book if you haven't already. So like I said, everything has always been about these people sacrificing and killing people for Judy Palm. Don't think all of them people that got lynched after they lynched them or why they was lynched them, they wasn't taking parts. That's what the whole purpose was. Okay. That's what all of this is about, man. And until we realize we're on we're always on the menu, we always gonna be getting eaten. So they couldn't get any real adrenochrome anymore. So my guess is they started eating clones and it's just made them all sick and poison. And so he basically low key starving them out and forcing them to have to turn states and do things in a different way. And so while they doing that, they're trying to counter with Gates and everything else that he's doing. But I've always thought he was uh, the woman and his wife was the man based upon his level in the game. Anybody have any uh, questions? Now, the thing is, all of these so-called black organizations have fallen under what's called the Morning Star Trust, which is ultimately, a, I think, a Jewish trust that's basically functioning and receiving all of the money from ultimately the top because you never ever heard anybody in the Morris Science Temple or any so-called group talk about having brokerage accounts or anything like that, right? No, you haven't. You haven't heard of any group talking about that. That's why nobody can have an account in where the money's going. Because in the end, a lot of these organizations and groups is set up to target people to confiscate. That's why we have to be careful. Because our brother is also the brother, Masonically, of the devil. This again is Marcus Garvey with Walter Pleckler. The same dude that denationalized all of us. Same dude that let him go to jail. So as great as Garvey was, as uh, taking an objective view, he was complicit in denationalizing us and getting us to go over there, which then eventually led to the great destabilization of what is now Liberia. Which again, upon when they talk about slavery, they talk about human trafficking, they talk about using people for, for food and rituals. They're using people more for food and rituals more than for slave labor, believe that. So, anybody have any last questions before we close out? Um, she's been on on and off trial since, really since the Benghazi thing, but ever since, you know what I'm saying? But really, now that Flynn is, the Flynn thing is out, they got to position her before they arrest her or get her wrapped up, you know what I'm saying? It's pretty much going to be over. Also, according to the stories and all of that, Tom Hanks and these people is he related to Dracula, <laughs> which again explains his his level of um, power in there. This again is the Archduke Ferdinand right before he got assassinated, which led to why um, part of why we in the ghetto today. <laughs> Real talk. Because this assassination, again, led to the dethroning and the hiding of the truth 
uh, crown, corona, of the Holy Roman Empire, which is the Red Fez, and um, allowed the, the fake people to move in. And then, like I said, with the help of the Castrati Mufti of Berlin, He got everybody to get in. You may not know who this is right now. I don't know if y'all know who this is. But this is. And people that's into black history. You know who this is? No, nope. saying <laughs> this gossip. No, nope. this is Sheikh Ben Faisal. When you read about Marcus Garvey, and you read about, let me see. Shake down. Yes, yeah, here he is. You may have seen this picture of him. seen this picture got you yeah so again keep of the secrets on all sides this is how close our ascendancy has been to this whole outside thing that we didn't know was going on. We was getting wrapped up in, which led to the rise and the breaking up of the Moors Science Temple, things like that. So again, I'm showing you this is how close the Moors are or were to the beginnings of all of this stuff. And the fact that our European cousins and these niggas was on some heavy, say, situation that put them in conjunction with these people. And that carried down into an extremist Islamist view that basically, in order to keep power, created a, a circumstance that would allow them to marginalize us and make us the abid to them when we're really the ones running it all. You know what I'm saying? This dude right here is the Sheikh Ben Faisal. You read about Marcus Garvey and Sheikh Deuce Muhammad and Chancellor Williams and Sheikh Amta Diop and these people. This was the dude, this was the go-to guy. This is the guy that taught all of them. So I'm showing you that that guy was sitting right next to this guy who they all was using as basically the puppet to get rid of the Khazarian Jews in mass. And this nigga was basically the one right next to Muhammad making it happen. Next to uh, Hitler and all these dudes made it happen, which led to the rise of the Muslim Brotherhood, which led to, again, the rise of the CIA, birthed by the Catholics, and then the, the Islamic extremist organizations, which has led to the schism in the black community today, which is why they don't like us being Moors. Because now we know why the Prophet called us Muslims and why the Moorish Empire is different and 
totally separate from the so-called Muslim Brotherhood, unless you as a Moor choose to become a Catholic by becoming a Muslim. See what I'm saying? Or by becoming a Freemason. Or by becoming a transgender. Or whatever. All of that is Catholicism. Which is Satanism. Which is Draconianism. Which is Draconianism. Which is a state. So. Yeah. That's when they murked them. Anybody have any last questions? Islam, I will. Yeah, man. So from 625 to, to now, this is it. This is the sign that we we are now the pillar. We are now the Kaaba. We are our self law master. We are Islam. Because this is what our ancestors have been doing. This is what establishes us different from those who took the religion and became Catholic. So Druids, Catholics, Satanists, Catholics, just think that you good. <laughs> Only people that's not Catholics is Moors, because we can't be. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Because we can't be. Even when we are, we not. Islam, you right. So again, anybody wants to uh, hit me up, hit me up at House of Bell at Hotmail.com. And uh, anybody else have any questions about themselves, their process or whatever, um, you know, let me know. It's definitely uh, an interesting time to do things just because of the fact that a lot of the places are closed. However, I believe they're going to open up by the Feast of Corona, which is after the 15th. Um, and like I said, check out some of the books that I spoke about earlier. And uh, if you guys have any other questions, you can hit me up. And at house of hotmail.com. Also, if you want to get a good read, I think they have an online version of this. There's a book called um, Private Eye. It's a comic book, actually. And it's basically about the cloud, the eye cloud bursting. And everybody's secrets coming out. So not everybody got to walk around with masks on. Very interesting, huh? So yeah, check that out if you will. Oh yeah, everybody's going to jail. All these new dudes is poison. And uh, we're watching Rome fall, so let's not fall with it. It's fine. All right. Exactly. So, peace everyone. Yeah, the chick from Smallville, she um, she was arrested. So something's happening. Inshallah. Yeah, we're going to see. They think they want this race war, but I doubt it. There's more forces against them, and they know it now. And again, the enemy, my enemy is my friend. So, the enemy is China.
and the Republicans and Democrats and the secret society cults down with them. So the goal is to get away from them and to fortify ourselves, inshallah. So we got to start with our own families and our own community. Start with our own house. So again, this is Mule Abdulaziz. <laughs> So you remember. Yeah, like I said, anybody these dudes trying to make tapes or whatever. And whatever. Um don't matter. Whatever they saying, they're not talking about nationality, birthright, inheritance, get down with it. Real, because in my opinion, it's the only solution. You want an army, you want a navy, you want this, you want that. You better have the means to fund it yourself, and you can't use firms. <laughs> so, you better become somebody of standing. That means substance. Because we all we got, boys. Islam.